Kevin told you he wasn't going to wear no dress until they offered him the dress, and then he put it on. And what did he say after he wore it? I made my own decision. Duh. But you didn't make it before they brought it up, did you? Welcome back, guys. My name is Chris Camera Guy. Today, we're diving deep into the tumultuous world of controversial comedian Cat Williams and the infamous Illuminati. Buckle up, because this is going to be a wild ride. Before we go any further, I've got some jaw-dropping news to spill. Just a few days ago, I found myself in the midst of a mind-blowing encounter with not one, but two 32-degree Freemasons right at the heart of the Hollywood Freemason Lodge. And embrace yourselves. These gents revealed to me that they recently sold one of their prized properties to none other than Disney. And, and guess what? That very spawn is now the filming location for the Jimmy Kimmel Show. But here's the kicker. I snagged exclusive access to explore their mystical lodge and even landed interviews with these mysterious figures. Now here's where you come in. Drop your burning questions in the comments below. And why, you may ask? Because I'm gearing up to invite these enigmatic Freemasons onto the show, onto this show, to spill the beans on everything that you want to know. So don't miss out. Leave a comment and I'll pick a lucky bunch to have their questions answered by these two Hollywood Freemasons. This is history in the making, folks, so stay tuned. And please join me on Patreon to support this channel. It's $10 per month, and it would really help me keep the lights on. I appreciate your support. Okay, back to Cat Williams. Williams does not hold back. This guy's known for making bold statements and serving up unfiltered views on everything under the sun, including the mysterious Illuminati. Let's dive into the wild world of Kat's public remarks that have been fueling those mind-bending conspiracy theories. Are you related to uh, Luda? No, um, so there was a crossroads where we were both invited to an Illuminati thing, and it had to be one or the other of us, and decisions had to be made. So it was both of us, we were equal. One of us had to cut off all their hair and couldn't do the sideburn thing no more with the points. And the next person they said was going to get $200 million because they were gonna pay him 10 million a movie to do 20 movies. And that's how the conversation happened. One of those persons turned out to be ludicrous, and the other person turned out to be Cat Williams. And as you might know, Hollywood practically is the breeding ground for Illuminati conspiracy tales. The place where whispers of soul selling for fame and fortune have been echoing since the dawn of time. Ludacris responded to Cat Williams' allegations with a freestyle to set the record straight, making it crystal clear that he is not part of the Illuminati. I'm lynching them. See the pendulum swing. Jesus with diamond thorns. Ludacris swaddled in Gucci linens when I was born. Never been Illuminati. Only a Illuminati. And I only left with bitches when coming from any party. Now I'm married with kids. The evolution of life. Never been a clout chaser, never say shit for likes. R.I.P. John Singleton. You never have to flex when you earn every one of your fast and furious checks. Afro with the sideburns. Yeah, that's my signature. Addictions on the rise. Comedians check your temperature. All right, time to pick sides. Are you rolling with Cat Williams or is your loyalty firmly planted in Team Ludacris? It's the ultimate showdown. Whose take has you nodding in agreement? Drop your allegiance in the comments and let the battle of beliefs begin. Williams also made fun of Kevin Hart for wearing a dress and calling it a possible humiliation ritual. If you're not familiar with the Kevin Hart dress incident, it appeared to be in reference to Hart dressing up as actor Quivin Zane Wallace during an appearance on Saturday Night Live back in 2013. The new pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee, Kavanshane <laughs> Wallace. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. I, I don't think anyone saw this one coming. Hart defended his decision in a post shared on X, formerly known as Twitter, and I quote, I wore a dress on SNL because I thought it was funny. I made that decision. Nobody made it for me. I am my own boss. End quote. 
The Kevin Hart versus Cat Williams saga takes a wild turn. He straight up accused Cat of being a self saboteur and, and wait for it, a closeted drug addict. Now, I get it. We've all had that one business partner who is a closeted drug aficionado and a pathological liar. My frustration with Cat Williams comes from you keep pointing at Hollywood. Hollywood, this, the white man, this, this, and this. When do you take responsibility for your action? Before we get into the nitty gritty, let's set the stage by understanding the historical context of Illuminati conspiracy theories. How do these theories emerge? Why do they capture the public's imagination? Now, some of you have been asking for the lowdown on the Illuminati and often confused with the Freemasons. And, and truth be told, I'm not an Illuminati expert, but I do know that the Bavarian Illuminati founded in 1776 by Adam Weishaupt had its moment in Bavaria and it doesn't seem to be active today at least not by that specific name. The modern players in the Illuminati game um, enter the, the, the Bilderberger, BlackRock Corporation, and, and JP Morgan uh, Chase Bank, just to name a few. And, and if you're not a fan of the Illuminati and a whole New World Order vibe, well, maybe take a peek at your daily banking routine, especially if it involves Chase Bank. And, and here's a little nugget for thought. Ever heard of Pfizer? The big pharma giant with a questionable track record um, accused of allegedly orchestrating a man-made virus known as COVID. And, and guess who holds the largest shares of Pfizer? Uh, Vanguard Group. Now, who's the big boss at Vanguard? BlackRock Corporation. And, and the puppet master pulling the strings at BlackRock, it's, it's Larry Fink. So when it comes to the Illuminati, it's not about Freemasons. It's about Larry Fink the big banking institutions, and big pharma. It's not about some dudes putting on dresses to be famous. It's truly a lot deeper than that. And it goes into your health care, the educational system, and all these celebrity rumors are here to distract you. So I'm here to set the record straight on who and what Freemasonry is. Freemasons were originally known as the Knights Templar, a medieval Christian military order formed in the 12th century. They faced a tumultuous history that included persecution by the Catholic Church. The order gained considerable wealth and influence, leading to tensions with both secular and religious authorities. The Knights Templar were established in the early 12th century to protect Christian pilgrims traveling to the Holy Land. Over time, they amassed significant wealth and influence through donations, land holdings, and creating the first bank ever. They were the first entity to have a legitimate banking system. And in the early 14th century, King Philip of France, heavily indebted by the Templars because of their banking system, colluded with Pope Clement to suppress the order. And on October 13th, 1307, the king ordered the simultaneous arrest of many Templars throughout France. And accusations included heresy, uh, blasphemy, and other charges. The arrested Templars faced harsh interrogations and, and torture to extract confessions. Many were coerced into admitting to heretical practices, including denying Christ and spitting on the cross. These confessions, often obtained under duress, formed the basis for charges against the order. And in 1312, Pope Clement officially disbanded the Knights Templar, and some of the Templars faced execution while others were imprisoned, or, or some, some of them even fled. And the suppression varied across regions with different outcomes for individual members. And in some cases, Templars were burned at the stake as heretics. And the most infamous event occurred in 1314 when Grand Master Jax de Molay and other high-ranking Templars were publicly burned in Paris on Friday the 13th. But wait, the tale takes an unexpected turn. While, while many Templars faced the Grim Reaper, some managed a daring escape to the United States and eventually went on to become the Freemasons. And as we all know, the founding fathers were all open members of the Freemason fraternity. So it leaves me to wonder, are the Freemasons the good guys? Was this all a ploy by King Philip and the Pope to relieve themselves of their debt to the Templars? Were they afraid that the, the Templars were becoming too influential and powerful? I mean, what do you personally think? It's also time to address the big question. Are Count Williams' Illuminati claims credible, or are they purely speculative? 
And as we wrap up our exploration into Cat Williams and the Illuminati, I want to hear from you. Do you think there's any truth to these conspiracy theories, or is it all just part of entertainment? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Until next time, stay curious.